Hey teachers, have you ever seen those digital notebooks in Google Slides that look beautiful and then they have all those different tabs and things that students can click on and when they click on a tab or they click on an icon, it goes to a specific place within the notebook? Well, when I first started seeing those years ago, usually one of two thoughts would pop into my head. Either that that looks really complicated and probably not something that I could ever do, or that teacher has way too much time on their hands because that looks really complicated. Well, if either of those thoughts have ever popped into your head when you see digital notebooks inside of Google Slides, you have come to the right place because over the years as I've gotten more familiar with Google Slides, I have learned that these types of digital notebooks with tabs are actually really easy to create and they don't have to take a whole lot of time. So in this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to create digital notebooks with tabs inside of Google Slides. All right, so before we get started, the one thing that I want you to know is there are all types of digital notebooks with all types of activities and clickables and just, you can almost do anything with a digital notebook. So for this video, I'm just gonna show you one way that it can be done. And in my opinion, this is the easiest way that it can be done. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer and get started. I'm gonna show you the ins and outs and hopefully by the end of this video, you will be ready to start creating your own digital notebooks with tabs. Okay, so to get started, you are of course going to want to open up a new Google Slides presentation. And the first thing you are going to want to do is you are going to want to resize the slide for whatever you want your digital notebooks to be. And honestly, that's going to be a matter of preference. To change it, you're gonna to go to File and then go to Page Setup. I like to do vertical and I like to keep it the same size as a sheet of paper, which is eight and a half by 11, just because if my students want to print something, that will allow them to do that. But I know teachers that use all different sizes, some use horizontal, some use vertical, so really just do what works best for you. For me, it's eight and a half by 11. So I am going to go ahead and apply that. Now, when I go to start creating my cover and some of the different pages, uh, you know we've talked about in other videos, there are certain things that we want to be locked down and then there's certain things that we want students to be able to manipulate. Now in Google Slides, there's only two ways to directly uh, have stuff that students cannot move and that's either by changing your background, which we've shown in a lot of videos and we'll show it again in this one in a little bit, or you can click on slide and go to edit master. Anything that you edit here in this master view, students are not going to be able to move or manipulate in any way. And what this master view does, you know you're in the master view when you see all the gray, but this lets you create different layouts that you can add to your presentation. So I will show you what I mean by that right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all these layouts that it has here just to make it easier. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my cover here in the master view because most of the stuff on the cover page, I don't actually want the students to be able to manipulate. So this is a digital notebook. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it look like a composition notebook. Um, you can design your cover however you want to. If you're familiar with how to use Canva, you can also design something in there that's really beautiful and drag it over. I'm literally just gonna show you one of the simplest things. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open a new tab in Google and I'm going to search for a composition notebook cover or notebook cover and i actually really like this one so let's just copy this image here and i'm going to paste it on this slide and then i'm just going to have it fill as much of this slide as possible i'm going to stretch it a little bit and you'll see i didn't have it come all the way to the top because this is where i'm going to add my tabs in now before i start adding those tabs in, one thing I wanna do is I want my students to be able to write their name in this section. So I'm going to add a text box here. And like I said, this is going to be a US history digital notebook. 
So I'm gonna pick a font. Let's go with Oswald. So we'll say US History Digital Notebook. And then for the name, I'm gonna make it a little simpler. Light, and we'll make it much smaller. And then when we go back to the regular view over here, I'll show you how to add a text box so that students can add their name in here. But this part of the text students will not be able to edit since we added it in in the master view. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and add those tabs in that students are gonna click on to go to the different pages. So to do that, I'm gonna use the shapes tool. You can use any shape. I like to use this one here, um, the one with the rounded corners. And honestly, this is something that you are just gonna wanna play with a little bit and get it uh, just right for you based on the number of tabs that you're going to have. And then you can just copy Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And you'll just paste your tabs along the top. And like I said, you're probably gonna need to play with these a little bit based on the number of tabs that you have. And once you've got your tabs in here, then you can go through and color each one a different color. Just remember that as you are adding colors to these, um, think about the text that you're gonna put on them and you wanna make sure that students are going to be able to read the text on each tab once you add that as well. Now, I like to make it so that the tabs are in the back so that way I don't have an uneven line or anything like that at the bottom. So I'm just gonna click on the text and then uh, push on control and click the image as well. And then I'm gonna right click and where it says order, I'm gonna bring all of this to the front. So the tabs are behind and you can see it just creates a straight line. It might not matter to you. I'm a little OCD so I like everything to be as clean as possible. Now I'm gonna add the text to each tab that tells students where they are going to go. So let's add a text box here and let's make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna make the font Oswald so that it is consistent with um, the heading that I have. And this is going to be early explorers and then I can just control C to copy, control V, drag that over to my next slide which is going to be American Indians. And what I'm going to do with each of these tabs is I'm gonna create sections where I have all of my passages and then comprehension questions that students use for each unit. Um, I'm a big believer when I'm teaching social studies, I just use um, simple passages that convey the information. I assess that whether students have gotten it with comprehension questions, um, but I like to present information to my students in this way. So I'm just creating this notebook so that they have all of this in one place where they can easily find the passages that they need for uh, each unit similar to a textbook but digital and then it also makes it really easy for me to be able to go in and grade when I can click on each of these sections see that they did the work and check it real quickly now we're gonna link the tabs to um, different parts of the digital notebook but we have to wait until those pages are there so we're gonna come back to this in a couple of minutes now the next thing that I want to do is what I like to do for each of these sections is I kind of like to have a page that transitions. So like a header page for early explorers, a header page for American Indians, so that students can clearly see that's the section that they're in. So I am going to add a new slide to the master view in the layout. And what I wanna do for this, I'm gonna go back to Google and I'm gonna just see if I can find some notebook paper just to make it look like an actual notebook. See, that might work. Let's copy this image, 
paste it here and then I'll drag it again to have it fill the whole slide. And I'm gonna leave a blank space at the top because after I add the links to each of those tabs, I will end up adding the tabs to each of these pages as well. But like I said, I wanna wait till I put the links in so that I don't have to do it multiple times. So this is going to be my page for Early Explorer. So I'm just going to add a heading here. And like I said, you can spend time and make your digital notebook so pretty. I'm just going through this very quickly so that I can show you how it's done. But you can spend as much or as little time as you want making these as fancy or is not fancy as you want. So I'm just gonna keep duplicating these by right clicking and then duplicating layout and then I'm just adding each of the headings to these pages. Now the great thing about these master view pages is that anytime I come back into the master view and I add something to one of these layout pages, it will automatically add it into the presentation as well where those layout pages have been used. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these pages into the lay to the actual presentation now so that I can go ahead and link those tabs, but I can come back to these later and add the tabs to these pages and it will automatically go to the presentation. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna exit out of the master view and I'm back in my regular presentation. And one thing I want you to notice is look how I can't drag or manipulate anything that's here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new slide and look how all these layouts that I just created are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in each of these subtitle pages that I created. And now I'm going to go back into the master view by clicking slide and edit master and i'm going to link each tab to the correct subtitle page so i'm going to click on early explorers and you want to click the whole box hit insert link and you can click on slides in this presentation and when i look over here i see the early explorer slide is number two so i'm going to click on slide two and click apply. And then I'm gonna do that for each of the other ones as well. I'm gonna click the box. I'm gonna click insert link. American Indians is slide three. So I'm gonna click slide three and apply. And I'm gonna do that for each one. Okay, so each of these have now been linked. So now I can go to each of these slides as well and add these tabs. Um, what I'm gonna do is I just highlighted everything so that only my tabs are highlighted, I'm gonna click Control C and I'm gonna paste it on each of these pages. Now remember, I like to bring everything to the front by clicking Order and Bring to Front. And you will notice that the links came with me. So that will go on each page. And if you look over here in the presentation, you'll see that those tabs are now added to this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for each of these. Okay, so now when I exit out, you can see what I mean. Uh, the tabs were added because I added those to the layout. And if I look at this in present mode, you can see that when I click on American Indians, it takes me there. When I click on Colonial America, it takes me there. So the tabs work in present mode as well. Now the next thing that we need to do is this is when I'm gonna start to add in my uh, interactive notebook pages that I've created. Now I have a PDF version of all of these and what I have already done is all of my digital or all of the pages that I want for my digital notebook, I've saved each page of a PDF as a JPEG so that way I can upload each of those pages into my digital notebook. Now we have a whole nother video here on this channel about how to take your PDF worksheets and carry them over into a Google Slides presentation and make them interactive. So if you're not familiar with this process, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that video as well. We have it linked in the description below so that you can find that because 
I'm just kind of quickly going to move through this process because this is a longer video um, showing you how it's done. So make sure to go back to that video if you're a little confused with what I'm doing right here. But I'm going to start with early explorers and I wanna go ahead and add in just some blank pages. Now you can see out of my layout pages, I don't have any blank ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to slide, edit master, and I am going to add in a blank page. And you'll notice that now when I exit out of this and go to add a new layout, there's a blank page that I can add in. And I'm gonna add in a couple of these. And now what I'm going to do, like I said, I've already saved all of my passages and questions as JPEGs and I'm going to bring them in as the background by clicking slide, change background, and then I'm gonna go through, find each of those images and set them up as the background. So I'll move through this kind of quickly because like I said, we have a whole nother video about it. Okay, so for right now, I've added in a few of the passages and questions for my early explorers and American Indian section. It would take me a little bit more time to go through and add passages for each of the sections, but you guys get the idea. So one thing that I do want to show you is if we look at this in present mode, when I first started creating these digital notebooks, one thing that I was worried about was, well, what happens if I keep adding pages? Do my tabs still work? Because for example, when we started this, we had the American Indians tab linked to slide three, but you saw I just added a lot of new slides into the early explorers section. So what happens to that tab that I set up before? You will notice when I clicked on American Indians, it still went to the American Indians page because as you add new slides in, Google remembers what you wanted it to link to and it will change automatically based on what you're adding in. So you don't need to worry about going back and adding new tabs. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go through and add my interactive components. Remember, anything we bring in either through a background image or that we create in the master view, students cannot manipulate. So we can go ahead and add a text box here so that way students can add their names in and I can make it light gray so that students know what to do and then you can see they can come in and add their name if they want to. I can also scroll down to my passages and start adding some text boxes in here, but basically that's what you'll do. You've got a lot of your stuff locked down, so then you'll just go in and add your um, text boxes where you want students to type. If you wanna add in drag and drop activities, we have another video on this channel all about how to create drag and drop activities in Google Slides you can go through and add those as well. Now the only other thing, well actually two other things I want to show you. Uh, first of all, when you add those interactive components, students must be viewing the digital notebook this way to be able to actually interact with those components. You'll see if I go over to present mode, they can click on the different tabs, but when I click on that uh, word box that I had added in right here, it wouldn't actually let me edit it. So if students want to edit, they have to come back to this presentation, this version of the presentation here. Now, the other thing that I will show you that I personally think is very helpful is if we go back to slide and edit the master, remember anything you do here, it will add to all of the pages that use that layout in the presentation. So let's look at the blank pages. These were the pages that I added the actual passages and questions to. And sometimes what I like to do is add a button to those pages so that way students can go back to the home screen at any time and then get to the other section. So let me show you how I do that. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use the shapes tool and I will create like a half circle here in the corner. 
So this kind of creates like a half circle. I don't want it to take up a lot of the page and I'll make it something like red so it's very obvious that it's here. You'll see that red is appearing on each of these. I just want to make sure there is enough of it there so that students can click on it. And then the next thing I like to do is to add like a home icon to it just so that way students know that if they click on this, it will take them to the home page. So I'm gonna copy this icon and paste it here and make it a little bit smaller, drag it into this circle. It does not need to be big, but most students will know when they see this that it goes back to the home page. I might need to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that icon and I'm gonna click insert link and then slides in this presentation and I am going to have it go to the first slide and apply. Now, check this out. I'm gonna go back to the regular presentation, and since I added this to the layout slide for the blank page, you will see that all of the pages that I created from that blank layout have that icon in the corner. So if we look at this in present mode, oh, I need to go back and fix it just a little bit so the whole icon is there. But from any page, students could click the home icon and it will take them back to the beginning and then they can go to a different section. So there you have it. That is the ins and outs of how to create a digital notebook. So there you have it. And as you can see, there are a lot of steps involved with this, but what I recommend is that you really just practice. The first digital notebook I ever made with tabs, that one did take me a while to create just because I was playing with everything and trying to figure everything out. But after I created that first one, it got easier and easier every time, and it took me less and less time every time I created a digital notebook. And now I'm able to create digital notebooks within minutes. So just keep practicing. If you're feeling frustrated, take a break and then come back to it. But that's the biggest recommendation that I can give is just to keep practicing and come back to this video anytime you need to. You can skip around and go to the parts with the information that you need. But I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and let me know, are you using digital notebooks with your students? And how are you using them with your students? What subject are you using them for? And what is the purpose of them with your class? And after you leave a comment, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel. When you do that, it really helps this channel to grow and it helps us to reach as many educators as possible. And then it also lets you know when our newest uh, videos and resources are available. So it keeps you up to date on what is happening with Vestal's 21st Century Classroom. So until next time, happy teaching.